Hey, this is Nick the Mining Book Guy, and today is the afternoon of Thursday, June 22nd, 2017. I have an unexpected presentation, which sometimes are the most fun. This is on Antipa Minerals, A-Z-Y on the ASX, or maybe I should say A-Z-Y. This is how you can tell I'm an American, because we pronounce that letter differently. But Antipa is a company that I've been trying to accumulate. In fact, I, I have a couple things to say. One, this is going to be a mixture of a talk on Antipa Minerals specifically and also global opportunities on different exchanges because this is an ASX stock and I know I've got an audience around the world. And I have to provide a disclosure that I own a bunch of shares. I was trying to get more. I'll tell you in a second why I'm not buying more. At least I decided not to. But I could buy or sell more at any time. I am completely independent, independent speculator, no relationship with the company. No one pays me for anything. I can't participate in private placements. I just like looking for the best opportunities, especially discovery type stories like Antipa. And all errors are my own, but uh, I'll try to my best to you know stick with uh, what I know and this is the Antipa website so again this is not going to be a full overview of Antipa but uh, hopefully <laughs> just introducing the stock is going to be a big deal to some of you and you'll be able to go to pages like uh, the presentations and media research and all the ASX announcements they're all here there's a ton of due diligence for you to do on your own, a lot to look into. But this is why we're here, is the most recent news release, June 22nd, uh, sorry, 21st, just a couple days ago, basically, or a day and a half ago for me. And there are some juicy high-grade results here, 42 meters at 7.8 grams per ton, within that 13 meters at 22.1 grams. That's really good. And that was you know relatively deep deeper hole, but then they had 28 meters at 3.6 for near surface. But both of these holes are excellent. I'd say easily the best news release these guys have come out with. So that's really exciting. And there's a lot more reasons to focus in on this. One is Hot Copper, one of my favorite sites. This is focused on ASX stocks, and I'm sure many of you will end up seeing this video soon after the release. Well, we can we can immediately see, you know, market cap twenty three million Australian dollars or so. They have five or six million in cash, I believe. So this is easily under a twenty million market cap, uh, which I'll hopefully you'll get an idea of how cheap that is as I go through this. But this news release first came out here, and you can see there was tons of activity, tons of other people talking about it, tons of views over six thousand views, tons of people giving, you know, thumbs up. So a lot of people are aware of this. They had been aware of it, but keep in mind there wasn't that much activity up until this point. So this news release, whether you think it's great news or not, it got the deserved exposure, at least in the Australian market. Now we'll go to my other favorite site for stocks, CEO.ca. In fact, I'm not even on the right page, but it will go there right now. See so just type in AZY and then dot AX, which is how you find Australian stocks here? Well, 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 <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. And so this is this is one of the most important parts of the video because it's not like ASX stocks are always ignored at CU.ca. That's not true at all. In fact, uh, one of the reasons I like the site is that I've discovered companies on other exchanges I never heard of. One one of the first uh, was by my friend uh, at Luke Ten Half. I, I like. Uh, you know, chatting with him on here because he's he tends to be early on. He was the first person who announced the Mariana Resources discovery, and that's when it was M A R L only on the AIM exchange in in the UK, and so that got you know deserved news and eventually got listed in Canada and a lot more people started to follow it and it was recently acquired or at least in the process of being acquired by Sandstorm Gold. Well, I'm not trying to say that this Antipa uh, these results you know, building on a discovery are, you know, at the level of Mariana. But not only are we not getting news on the results, we don't have any background on Antipa, Antipa at all. And honestly, in this week, these were the best results 
I've seen of companies I follow anywhere. And so it's, it's one thing to, you know, like or not like results. It's another to not even be aware of the company. And so this, this is where I'm finding all my opportunities is looking for companies where they should get their due respect, but they're not. And, and I think that's a reason that Antipa is as cheap as it is. I will go so far as to say that I like Antipa Minerals in Australia more than any similar company on valuation in Canada. And I think those jurisdictions uh, are, you know, in general, are about the same risk. Because a lot of people, they'll tell me, well, you know, Nick, you you like looking for all these companies that are underfollowed, but so many of them are based in Africa and I don't like Africa, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is in Australia, in Western Australia, and I'll, and I'll have more to say about why this should be followed. So for a lot of you, just knowing that Antipa exists is probably plenty of value in this video. But I, of course, have a lot more to say. So keep watching to uh, um, see some other stuff. I do have some shout outs. Here's one on uh, at Nick. And Nick is, so my name's Nick as well, but he claimed the at Nick uh, handle at CEO.ca. That makes it kind of confusing, but he's from Australia and I first heard about Antipa through Nick. And this is important because even though he never discussed it publicly, people have private chats all the time. I have all sorts of great private chats here. And I, of course I could have announced it, but I find it very interesting that you know nobody else had talked about it. So not only have I found companies like Antipa, through Nick, or at least, you know, first were introduced to them, but another one, Predictive Discovery, PDI on the ASX. I want to mention that because if you're new to my channel, which I'm sure some of you will be, uh, you should check out that video it, I did a few weeks ago. It was my last company video. That was a true in-depth video where I went through a lot more detail on Predictive and and not just that, but on, on the Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire as, as an opportunity, uh, one of my, you know, favorite emerging jurisdictions. But the point is, uh, you you want to be friends with people who are from other parts of the world who might have an edge in those areas. And to be clear, Nick is inverter at Hot Copper. So, you know, whether you are on one side or both sites, you can follow him. He gave me permission to say this, and I, I give him a lot of credit for introducing me to ideas. We uh, definitely helped me make more money by making friends with people like that, Nick. But uh, knowing that, I... He's not the only person, and, and this is an important point too. It's always good to get hear about ideas through different sources. Sprott did a placement with Antipa back in November. And this is key. It's not like I'm getting sold on this through Sprott. And I'll, I'll be saying a little more about it. I am a client of Sprott Global as a retail investor, so I do get ideas through them. But knowing that credibility and then asking about it because I uh, you know that that helps me get another opinion so that was a big part of me you know warming up to this idea and interestingly there were no warrants in this deal and it was at 2.6 cents and Antipa still trading at two cents and you know I my my cost average is uh, 1.9 oh I, I maybe I forgot to mention this but I bought all my shares between 1.7 and 2.1 cents. Just just as a full disclosure, so you know that it's trading roughly where I bought in. There's no no weird stuff going on there. But the point is that added some credibility. And I, I didn't really start following it until recently, but I can always ask the Sprott people about it. And I have to give a few other shout outs and, and I, I was given permission by my broker to you know mention it. Again, I'm independent. I actually don't necessarily want you all to become Sprott clients because I get a lot of value from it, but I think it's very deserving. So Andrew Jackson, who I never talked to, he's definitely key as you know one of the lead ge geologists within Sprott and information gets disseminated from him to my brokers. And, my, and, and so that's great on its own, but my brokers are John Sebastian and Sam Broom and it's been great. I've def I pay a lot in commissions to work with these guys, but I take advantage of the, you know, the full service brokerage. And I... I mean, I've been doing this for a couple of years with these guys, but I'll give a, you know, in particular, a shout out to Sam because I, I lately have been talking to Sam a lot more and I'll have a funny story to add in a second. But Sam is from New Zealand and he's worked in Australia and now he lives in San Diego. And so like that's really unique on its own, but he definitely gives me more confidence in looking at ASX stocks because He's from that part of the world, and he's worked in that area, so that's awesome. And even as a recent example, he has this cool video, so 
If you haven't seen it, you should, you should check it out, uh, where he talks about Cobalt. And I made money, actually more directly made money through his interest in Ardea Resources, which is ARL on the ASX. And that's an interesting parallel because I heard about that through Sam. At around the same time, I heard about it through at Pamplona Trader at CEO.ca, who I keep mentioning in all my videos. It's probably because he has so many good picks, but everyone at CEO.ca is aware of Pamplona Trader. But that was cool because these guys independently found this company. I'm not even a huge fan of Cobalt, but you know, I something clicked with that information. It was probably the fastest doubling of my money. And I, you know, in hindsight, I should have bought more shares, but I had a hefty amount of shares. So I made a lot of money very quickly through the help of Sam and Pamplona Trader, you know, just as another example out there. Interestingly though, Pamplona Trader was able to get a lot of CEO.ca people interested in that one ASX stock. And there's a couple others like Deep Yellow that have gotten interest. But in general, a lot of those people are still not following ASX stocks. So I, I'm just trying to hammer home that point and how I'm taking advantage of that, the people I talk to. And a little more on Sam, you can, you know, Again, I don't care if, if you ever become a client. It'd be, it'd be interesting if, if you might want to be, but check out more stuff on Sam at his Twitter account because he's got some cool info that he uh, tends to update from time to time. And okay, there is a fun little story. So the Nude Investor is a site that he used to update. And I, uh, I believe this is true, but at the time, John was my only broker. And I think John was playing volleyball with Sam a bunch. And I he told me, you know, there's this... Funny guy, Sam, who runs uh, the Nude Investor. Well, the funny part, I think this is just a funny name for a site, but this site's still up here, and you can see he hasn't really updated for a while because there's regulations and all that. But there's a lot of cool info here, and so I reached out to Sam, and I remember talking to him at the time, you know, just as another, you know, investor speculator, having no idea that he would eventually become my broker. So that's funny, but also the fact that these guys play volleyball, and I know Brent Cook plays volleyball, so like, What's with all these resource mining broker guys playing volleyball or beach volleyball? It almost makes me want to start playing. I, I haven't played any volleyball since high school. So I just think that's kind of a funny story. I wonder if there's some other resource people out there who are playing volleyball these days. But now Sam's with Sprott. And so that's all cool. And you can learn a lot of cool stuff about him uh, through those links. But now back to Antipa, at least for a little bit. We're on one of the PowerPoints, the most recent one, and this shows Gold Coast Investment Showcase that they're doing a road show. They're going around uh, doing some cool stuff. Uh, so what I think, no, I'm not going to go through all the details. I will just go through a, a couple things quickly. And this is huge right here, this one picture, because they have consolidated uh, roughly 4,400 square kilometers, huge amount of land in Western Australia. And if, if nothing else, realize that this is surrounding around the, you know, same trend or area as the Telfer mine, which I think a lot of North Americans aren't even aware of, but this is true tier one, you know, 32 million ounce uh, gold gold mine with, with some copper. I mean, th this is crazy, like that, that they've been able to get so much land and, you know, kudos to management to doing, being able to do that in a down market. I think it's going to just now start getting attention, but not only do they have that land, but those results we talked about were 100% owned property here, you know, the Minyari Waka area. Well, this area up here is JV'd with Rio Tinto, and I believe this is the only Rio Tinto JV in Australia. And if it's not the only one, it's definitely the best one because Rio's taking this seriously. So the crazy thing is, even with all the excitement around what I just showed you in the news release, there's a lot more excitement coming with the Rio stuff. And I'm just going to scroll down quickly. I'll come back to this a little later. Uh, Rio... So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I love these slides because it shows how much work is going. So phase one is still going on. There's going to be more results, and it was even extended for the 100% owned stuff. But Rio is doing all this stuff, so we're going to have all that information. And the Patterson project hasn't, isn't even quite at the drilling stage yet, but that who knows? That could be really interesting, too, because that's the closest area to Telfer. So they've got some awesome, you know, tier one potential. I will get into a few negatives as we get closer to the, the end of the video, but... You know, these are the main highlights. You can do more research on your own. And just looking at the uh, this news release, I just want to tell you a little bit of how I'm interpreting things. And again, I'm not a geo. I, I, I do get some, some info from Sprott. By the way, Sprott, 
I know they're interested in Antipa, but it's not like they're selling people on it. So this is still really early, even though Sprott owns uh, some shares in it. This has not really been pushed as a company. And I'll tell you why I think it could be pushed. I this this there's a good and a bad here. Like these this was a great drilling result. But notice, you know, you have high very high grade within this wider intersection. That's something I've learned to always be careful of is the possibility of smearing. Uh, you know, sometimes it's purposeful, sometimes it's not, but this intersection in terms of mineable intersection is probably going to be less than this full 42 meters. But more importantly, the way this is drilled and the way this deposit, you know, is kind of forming, this is not the true width. The true width is going to be, you know, lateral like this, and it's going to be much less. It's, uh, you know, this, this in particular, this angle is, you know, kind of drilling right into the ore body. So who knows? It might be 20 meters or 15 meters. But even if it was, you know, 10 meters or 5 meters, that's still very mineable and it's very high grade. And what I think could be very, very exciting here is getting the deeper drill results. And, and if the deeper results are of roughly the same width or even wider and higher grade, that could get really, really exciting for underground mining. And maybe, they're, maybe they will be on to something tier one. Uh, but going into one of the negatives, yeah, I'll touch on it really quickly. Well, so negative and positive here. So they also had these near surface results. And this, this is really good grade near surface. In fact, I don't know how many other places in Australia are still getting you know, high grade near surface like this. But at the moment, I don't think there's that much. You know, it's not that big near surface. I think the expansion potential at Minyari and Waka is more going to be going deeper. And I know from talking to management that they want to push this forward with a scoping study by the end of the year. And I think that is one of the weaknesses I see longer term is the possibility of mix mixed messaging, knowing that Rio is only going for tier one massive deposits. Well, Minyari Waka, they, there is, they, they know that there's a bigger potential, but they might be spending money and pushing forward with this smaller scale near surface production. And part of that is that they're selling to Australian investors. And, you know, I'm not Australian and maybe, maybe that's what people are asking for. And people at Hot Copper are okay with that. But I personally would prefer that they just focus on the big exploration scale. That might change. The, 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 the most important thing to me though is that doesn't really matter right now. They're, they're just growing the deposit. That's more of a longer term issue. And so it's something I'm monitoring, but I, I, you know, I, I feel obligated to give you, you know, some of the negatives because even though I, I'm, I'm biased and very positive, that's one thing I'm thinking about. I'll, I'll give a few more, you know, little negatives a little later, but uh, we'll get into a couple of fun things quickly or, or kind of, you know, interesting side notes. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got this company, Greatland Gold. So yeah, fun side story. I had another video on Mod Resources, coincidentally also an ASX company. And Mod has a JV in Botswana with a company called Metal Tiger. And I didn't talk much about Metal Tiger, but all these hordes of, you know, fun, nice UK-based investors got me interested in Metal Tiger and, and really liked my video. Well, that was the thing. They really liked my video and they found me on Twitter. And one of them is Claire Young, who uh, I haven't really talked to much, but I appreciate it that she retweets a lot of my stuff and I, I see her in some of the Twitter chat rooms. And what's cool is that I follow her stuff and she posted this stuff on Greatland Gold related to Antipa Minerals. So that was really neat. That's what's neat about meeting these people um, you know, serendipitously from different parts of the world is you learn more stuff that's relevant to you or you know, about companies you might have heard of or might not have heard of. But in this case, Greatland Gold has a, you know, you know, an interesting uh, indirect relationship with Antipa Minerals. And so I heard about it through Claire and so, yeah, I just wanted to give her a shout out because uh, I, I like meeting people like Claire or seeing them online. And then there's another uh, person, Neptune123, never met either, but this this was all on the same day. You know, coincidentally, Neptune also posted on Antipa on, on the actual news release that uh, Greatland Gold did. So this is, this is on Greatland Gold, but posted in the Antipa room and talking about... Uh, you know, the position they have near Antipa in Western Australia. And then in addition to that, I checked out CEO.ca 
And here, further reinforcement of how, while people at CEO.ca are open to a lot of opportunities, nobody's talking about Greatland Gold. And here's a shout out to at Blue Share, who's another one of the Metal Tiger followers. In fact, he's probably one of the uh, most knowledgeable people on Metal Tiger. And and that was kind of interesting that Metal Tiger owns uh, a bit of uh, Greatland Gold, which is GGP on, on the AIM exchange. Uh, so so I kind of indirectly own it, even though I wasn't thinking about it, because these guys, um, people convinced me to buy some Metal Tiger shares to go along with my much larger uh, mod resources position. But uh, I, I'm just kind of making the points, you know, you learn about all these different things through these different people, and you can follow Blue Share as well. Actually, you know, just a little bit of an extra shout out, Blue Share has his own um, forum, which if I had more time, I'd follow it more closely, but I believe it's a really good forum for following uh, you know, see FTSE listed, AIM listed for for UK listed companies, and and you can follow Blue Share at on Twitter as well. But uh, when it comes down to it, all these people are what they're talking about is this company Greatland Gold. I'll scroll up real quick, and Greatland, you know, interestingly, it's a uh, an AIM listed company in the UK, but all of its projects are focused in Australia. And I don't even know if the Australians know so much about it, but. That shows you can find interesting stuff on different exchanges, and they have a JV with Newmont, very credible in a different part of Australia. But they also have this Hever Heveron uh, project, which is the one I wasn't aware of at all. And so we scroll down, and you can see it's not too far from the Telfer mine, and you keep scrolling. Ah, all of this is uh, Antipa. Haveron's here, and or, or sorry, Telf Telfer's here, but all in the same area, and you keep scrolling, and you see stuff. Ah, and then here. So this is where you can see what ha what uh, Greatland Gold has, and you can see it's actually adjacent to some of Antipa's properties. So this is exciting because on uh, one of Claire's retweets, it was related to a podcast in the UK, I believe it was Share Talk, and I listened to it, and they talked the management at Greatland Gold might push forward what they're doing on this project. Uh, because of what happened with Antipa. So that's exciting because of consolidation. It's also exciting because I wasn't really following Greatland. Who knows? Maybe I'll get interested and want to buy into it. And it's also neat that more UK investors are, are probably aware of Antipa because of this news release now as well. So you see that cross-pollination at least happening between the UK and Australia. Not as, not as much at CEO.ca with the Canadians, but that's I expect to see more of this type of stuff in the future in general. So I, I, I just want to make the point, it's related to Antipa, but it's also related to the cross-pollination of all these different exchanges. And I find that very exciting because it's so easy for us to have access to this info via the internet. Now back to Antipa a little more. I don't have uh, too much more left, but I do have a couple other pretty interesting points if you want to listen a few more minutes. Uh, I'll go through one other negative. I, the price did spike up on this news a bit. I think it was up to 2.4 Australian cents, but it came back down. And I think part of that is that this is a bloated share structure. Now, this is a complaint that a lot of uh, you know Canadians especially have because they look at TSXV listed companies that always have or generally have much tighter share structures. Now, I personally don't think this is that big of a deal, especially if it's you know one of the biggest weaknesses, but it does sometimes hinder uh, price spikes on discoveries because there's just too many shares out. So it's something to be aware of, but don't assume that all ASX companies are this way. Many of them have tighter share structures, and so people should be aware of that. You know, Management owns a really good amount. They have plenty of cash. I think this is super cheap just based on what we saw with these results and what they're you know potentially building on with you know further discovery and also the Rio JV. But what I really wanted to focus on right here is the board and management. And I can't believe, you know, after the fact that these guys gave me over an hour of their time because I called management up and this is this, you know, this is my general tip. You should always try to call management. You never know the stuff you'll learn. And I, I feel like a bit of a doofus because I should have looked into Lion or mining beforehand. But that's my main point here is that look at this. So former external legal, legal advisor to Lion or by the way, I talked to Stephen Power and Roger Mason. So I, I really appreciate it that, you know, these guys together gave me over an hour of their time a few weeks ago. Uh, but Roger Mason, he was, uh, you know, former general manager of Lion or and then Mark Rhoda. General Counsel Lionor. And all these guys I know are, you know, pretty well known, at least in Australia. But this Lionor keeps coming up. And, you know, they, they talked about it a little bit, and I realized, oh man, this was a big deal. And so, yeah, I'll go to this link. 
So back in 2007, kind of, in, you know, the high of the last cycle, holy cow, I can't believe that I didn't, wasn't aware of this. And by the way, I'm relatively young. I'm in my 30s. So I wasn't following mining back then. I and mean, this is like a decade ago. But some of you older people might, you know what? There might be people in North America who weren't even really following line or, but holy cow that this was a $6.8 billion deal. I don't even care if it was Canadian or U.S. That's huge money. And it was, uh, you know, Norilsk outbid, bid Extrata, big time companies. And this was nickel focused. So that's why. But oh, can you, you believe that all of this management was, was running that? And, and that's what's crazy. Like I was, I was immediately thinking, wow, this reminds me of Orca Gold, which is one of my other uh, top picks. And I have a bunch of videos on Orca. I'm sure you could find it. But that was the Redback team that did a similar type of sale at the top of the market for, uh, I think it was 7 billion US to Kinross. But that was at 2011. But I was thinking, you know, those guys sometimes don't re receive the respect they deserve. And maybe that's the case with these guys. I'm, I'm sure that people in Australia, at least some of them know about it. But if you're not aware, you know, you should look into Lion or Mining. But I'm going to give you one more cool reason, and this is this this might be something that the Australians aren't aware of. But this kind of puts everything into perspective. And we're going back to CEO.ca in this case because I'll, I'll definitely give CEO.ca credit for this. And this was a great article written by Tommy Humphreys, the guy who runs CEO.ca, on Wayne Deans. And as a side note, I learned about Wayne. Uh, through a cool book I picked up called uh, Canadian or Superstar Stock Pickers. You know what? I forgot the exact name because I don't have it in front of me, but I have a video on that. If you're interested, I think it's an excellent book. What, uh, you know, No matter where you're from in the world, if you want to know about Canadian fund managers that did quite well in the 2000s, and Wayne had my favorite chapter in it, and it's funny because I completely forgot that one of his big wins was Lion or Mining. And... He got in at 50 cents up to 27. Huge win. Huge win that he, uh, you know, stuck with it for a decade and got over a 50 bagger, at least, you know, from bottom to top. But, but still, like he – and so it's cool because I, I do believe Lionor was at one point listed in the – you know, in Canada – in the UK and in Australia, which is unusual, but it was, but it was still, you know, the, the foundation of the company was in Australia. So this puts it all into perspective that you, sh you, you should be open to global companies like someone like Wayne Deans. I actually, I'll, I'll have, next time I talk to uh, um, the Antipa management, I'll have to ask them if they know Wayne. Cause like, that's a, like he, I know he's a savvy investor. And if you're like me, if you're retail like me, you should start, you should, you should, you know, learn from people like Wayne, like look for these companies that other people are overlooking when they're really small, like Antipa is right now. Cause who knows, maybe, maybe Antipa is going to repeat what line or success. Cause they've got the same people involved. And even though it's not in nickel, it's in gold and copper. They've got Rio who's looking for, you know, right now Rio is agnostic commodity agnostic and, they don't, you know, whether it's a tier one gold or tier one copper focused, they're looking for the next Telfer mine and they're in the right location. So, uh, yeah, that's that's just kind of a cool thing. You, you should check out this article. I'll, I'll have a link to this and the other articles in the notes below. But I think that's about all I have. So I appreciate it if you stuck with me. Hopefully you, you got something out of this. Again, even if you never buy a company like Antipa, hopefully this at least gets you more interested in looking and at companies that are listed on other exchanges, whether you're an Australian looking at Canadian or a Canadian looking at UK or you know, you're from Netherlands looking at something else. Again, like I've got people watching this from around the world. So I hope no matter where you are, you got something out of this. And you should definitely should be following Antipa because like I said, people at CEO.ca, they don't even know the company exists. And I think it was the best uh, drill results that I saw this week, or at least for a company of that size. And and personally, I'm finding a lot of interesting opportunities in Australia, but Antipa is my number one uh, Australian early stage pick right now. So maybe I'll have more on Antipa in the future, but hopefully this is a good starting point. Always do your own due diligence. And I hope you, if you're new to my channel, that you continue following me and that you uh, you know check out some of my other videos, but I'm sure I'll have some more interesting stuff for you in the coming weeks and months. This is Nick the Mining Book Guy. Thanks for watching. Bye.